see in either September or October in Palo Vedra. I'll be back a bunch of times. Hey, how, how are you? How are you doing? Good, good. good. How's your race going? Yeah, I guess okay. Yours yeah. is going great. I think so. Good. We're working hard. Just keep working. Thanks for having me back. I appreciate it. Good to see you. Everybody's waiting for you inside, Well, I'm waiting friend. for them, so thank you for... Hi there, how are you? Good to see you. I love you guys. Thank you for having me. Hey guys, thank you. How are you? Good to see you. Great, great, great to see you. Thank you for having me. How are you? Good to see you. Likewise. Nice to see you. Likewise, good to see you. Hi, good to see you guys. Thank you guys for being a part of this today. I'm really grateful to you guys. Ultimately, I think individual candidates should, are responsible for going out and telling people, look, these are the things we're going to do. Yeah. You know, and that's what I want to do. People ask, why are you rolling out all this public policy? Because that's what politics should be about. I don't want to win this election and people say, oh, he won because he ran better commercials or he won because he had a better grassroots operation. I want to have better commercials and a better grassroots operation, but I want them to say he won because he ran on these ideas and now we're going to hold him accountable to those ideas. Now he's got to go out and make that stuff happen or be a part of making that stuff happen. And that's important. That's how you change the culture of politics. If you like the way things are going in Washington, D.C., you should vote for Charlie Crist and you should, or, or the Democratic nominee. If you think that the way things are going up there is the right direction for our country, I'm the wrong person. I, I am, because I don't intend to go up there and be a part of this. I want to go, I'm, the only reason I'm running for the U.S. Senate is because I believe that the direction that Washington's taking our country will rob us of everything that makes America special. And I'm the only one running that's willing to say that, much less do anything else about it. This election is starting to come into focus for an increasing number of people across the, the, the state and country. It really is about whether we want America to remain exceptional or not. I mean, that's really the choice that we're being given. Do we want to continue to be this extraordinary country where anyone from anywhere can accomplish anything, or are we prepared to become just like every other country? There's only two things that we want our government to be focused on, things that make our people secure and things, things that make our people prosperous. We want, we want America to be the strongest country in the world, and we want the United States economy to continue to be a place where anyone from anywhere can accomplish anything, a place of extraordinary upward mobility. I don't think I'm going to win the Mr. Congeniality vote in Washington. I really don't. I don't think I'm going to be a popular senator within the halls of Congress because I'm a little bit impatient, but I think that's a good thing because, quite frankly, the direction that both parties, look, let's accept the reality. In Washington, the Republican Party made some serious mistakes over the last 10 to 12 years. It cost us a majority and the confidence of people, and that has to be reclaimed. And so I always tell Republicans, if we just run as the anti-Obama party, we're going to pick up some seats because the president is doing a terrible job. But if we run as the alternative, we're going to win a majority or have a chance to really win a majority, and that's what I want us to be, an alternative. There's no accountability in politics anymore. These guys up there think they can do whatever they want. They can vote any way they want, because if they can raise enough money, they can convince you of whatever they want to convince you of. And that is destructive to our republic. That's the reason why none of these problems get solved. It's the reason why issues that are polling at 70% negative still pass, because these guys don't think they're accountable. They think that they can do whatever they want, and they laugh at us. Because later on, we'll raise $15 million, we'll run a bunch of commercials, and you'll forget all about it. And that attitude has permeated Washington, and it's destroying our republic. The agenda that this White House and this Congress is pursuing is outside the mainstream of America. And the greatest proof of it is they don't admit it's their agenda. The things they want, they can't get passed. The health care bill, they only were able to get passed because they did it on Christmas Eve by ramming it down everyone's throat. Okay? The, the, uh, the, the spending bills that they've done, like the stimulus, everyone's running away from it now. The point is their agenda is stalled, quite frankly, because they know, the people that are running for re-election know that if they vote for this stuff again, they will never be re-elected. So their agenda is outside the mainstream of America. Public polling proves that, and even their own actions prove that. One of the ways they're trying to circumvent that is by using executive agency power to accomplish things. One of the things they're trying to accomplish right now through the Environmental Protection Agency is cap and trade. So they're basically going to try to do cap and trade through the Environmental Protection Agency. We should be very concerned about the overreach of executive power, and that's why we need strong people in the United States Senate and Congress that will call it out for what it is. Florida has a balanced budget. And uh, every governor in history has always taken credit for balancing our budget, all right? But it's not because they wanted to, believe me. It's because they're not allowed to deficit spend. 
And so every year they go to Tallahassee, and you'll read negative newspaper articles about how they're not funding this and they're not funding that. But at the end of the day, it hurts a lot less than having to run California or New Jersey or Illinois-style deficits. Okay? And what's kept us from that fate is that we have a balanced budget here in Florida by Constitution. I'm telling you what I know to be fact. I don't care who's in charge, Republicans, Democrats, whoever. If you don't have a balanced budget requirement, over time, they will not balance the budget. If you give the politician an easy road out, they will take the easy road out every single time. And the easy road out is not to make the tough choices. It's just to print more money or borrow more money and not and let somebody else worry about this problem in the future. We can't continue to do that. If we do, we will lose everything that makes America exceptional. What we need in this country is for the government to get out of the way of the job creators and create an environment that sends a clear message <laughs> that this is the best place in the world to do business. And there's specific things they need to do. First of all, we need our political leaders to say the following. We're not going to have a value-added tax. We're not going to have cap-and-trade. We're not going to have card check. And we're going to repeal and replace Obamacare. Okay? The second thing... The second thing we need him to say is we're going to make the current tax code, which was established in 01 and 03, permanent, and we're going to do it for everybody. We're not going to do this class warfare thing. Now people know what the tax code is going to be going forward. The third thing we need to do is we need to simplify and reform our tax code, which is complicated. That means flatten and lower the personal tax rate. That means lower the corporate tax rate, which is the second highest in the industrialized world. That means significantly lower the capital gains tax, which is a tax on job creation. That means eliminate the dividends tax. That means wipe out forever the inheritance or death tax, which is destructive to small businesses and farmers and everyone else along the way. If we did those things, this economy would start to grow rapidly. Number one, Obamacare is a job killer. A bunch of businesses are not growing and are not opening up because they're afraid of what that bill means to their bottom line. The second thing it does is it grows our debt. It, it borrows billions and billions of dollars over the next few years, and it also transfers money out of you know, Medicare Advantage, for example, and into the, to, in order to fund this experiment of theirs. The third thing that it does is it's going to cost millions of Americans their existing coverage. That's the thing that's lost in translation. There are millions of people out there that are very happy with the coverage they have right now, but somehow the Congress has decided their plan is not good enough. Well, they're going to lose that coverage now. The fourth thing it's going to do is it's going to raise premiums. Premiums are going to go up. And by the way, I believe that was the design of this plan because they know that if premiums go up in the private sector, it will force more people into public plans and ultimately bring about the day where we have a single-payer system in America. And that's what they're trying to accomplish with this bill. Well, I am grateful to you guys. Thank you for being a part of this. I'll be here for a few more minutes. So thank you.